This video is to cover SCCM's error when doing Windows Pixie Boot. With Windows PE, you get a preparing network connections, and just as it starts to get into the process of imaging, it reboots. So the most common error that we've seen is the fact that the GUID, the SMB GUID, is already in the SCC database, SCCM database. So this is the screen that you'll see. This is the last screen you'll see just as it reboots. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to get into a command shell. And to do that is on the client that's having the problem with the PC, you basically um, hit F8 just as it gets into the GUI. And when you hit F8, you'll get the command prompt window, which stops it from progressing and rebooting. When you get into the, um, the GUI, you can actually, um, after you hit the F8, you're going to navigate to by typing the drive letter and colon, hit and enter. And most of the time, that's D colon enter. Um, it depends on which one is uh, hosting your uh, SMS PE image. So what you can do is try the D drive, do a dir, and if you see a folder called SMS log, that's it. If you don't, try an E, and try an F, try a C, whatever. Once you find the log, move into that folder, and then just type notepad and the name of the log. You can do a dir to make sure it matches this name. And it'll open notepad, just like this image shows, with the log. And you can use the search feature. And what you're looking for is SMP BIOS. GUID equals, or you can just put SMB BIOS in there. I'm not sure I would put the equals. Um, and you're going to find multiple hits on it. What you're looking for is the point where it shows a long GUID. And we found in some situations it shows more than one GUID. So you're going to want to know them all. Now, when you're booting, you can put a thumb drive in the device to copy this log off. And, you know, if you have somebody else doing it, and they're going to bring you the log for troubleshooting. They can do that, or they can just take a picture of it. You're really not going to reference the whole number. You're going to reference part of the number. So it's not like you got to type the whole thing. So um, for this example, I have just a sample in there. I made this one up. But you're going to be looking for this GUID. You're also going to look for something that says no task sequences available. And that's basically a, a good indicator that says, and you can search for the log for that as well, that it believes this machine is already in inventory, it already has an image, and known or unknown computer GUIDs inside the SCCM database are not allowed to receive pixie-based imaging. And basically what it's going to do is kick it out. So let's show you how to find it. Um, I have our SCCM up here. So once I have the GUID from the log that I'm looking for, I go into SCCM. And um, what you're going to do is you're going to go into the Assets and Compliance, and you're going to go into Device Collections. Click on Device Collections, then double-click All Systems. Then I'll take you up to the Devices and open the All Systems uh, 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 collection of the devices. Now, by default, this column is not on. You're going to want this column on, so I'm going to turn it off and just show you where it is. You basically right-click up here anywhere, and you go down to ID, and you turn it on. That contains the GUID. The field is GUID, the number actually starts here. So um, the all systems will actually list the uh, all your known computers. And uh, we're going to be searching for this for the GUID in question. Uh, so the other thing you want to do first is, in the device collections, go to all unknown computers. Do that first because if there's an unknown computer in here, other than these two, full, uh, the X64 and X86 default markers, don't delete these, but delete any others that are in here that are unknown. That means it attempted, didn't complete, and that's probably uh, locking that machine up because it, although it's unknown, it's still in the inventory and it can't be. Because mine's not in here, um, I'm going to go back to our all systems one and uh, we're going to search for it. And I'm going to basically go here and hit the add criteria go down to ID click it hit add and in here not in the search in the ID I'm going to put the beginning let's just start with two characters of the GUID and I've got quite a few hits here so from my um, from my log I've got the other I'm going to put four digits usually four digits is enough to find it 
and I'll hit search and there's the device. Now yours might say unknown. I'm simulating this so that you can see it, but this is the computer account that's dead. It's been deleted from the domain and it's still showing up here. If there were more than one with the same GUID, I'd do them all. So basically what we have to do here is we have to delete this from our inventory. And once that's gone and we search and we don't have the GUID in there, now if I had a, a second or third GUID, I'd search for those as well. We did, uh, have success after doing that of getting the image to uh, run again and the only other thing we you know you might want to do at some point if you're searching for something a good place to go is monitoring and you go to queries and you can make new queries here to search for particular fields for example we have one that I made today which was search for Mac we wanted to see if a Mac address was in there um, to see if the machine had better ever been imaged with that NIC card and I wrote this by editing the query statement here. Let me see if that pops up. And the criteria was here. And basically what this did is this, it selected specific fields from a database where the MAC address equals and then this variable. And that pound pound, this variable, means it's going to prompt you for the MAC address. So when you run this query, if I run it, I type in the MAC address, it'll find the MAC address and show me the machine that's associated with it. So that's sometimes helpful if you can't find the GUID but you know the MAC address. Um, you can use that as well. But anyway, once you delete that from the all systems, then your imaging should work again. Hope that helps. Bye-bye.